Alrighty guys, welcome back. So it's been a little while since my last video. Um, so just thought I'd make something really quick for you. Um, today, as the title would say, we're gonna be covering um, what exactly it is you need to know before you actually decide which ECU or engine management system is right for you. Um, I often get calls every couple of days, every week or so, um, persons wanting to tune their car, but for whatever reason, the, re the reason um, or the issue choice they have in mind is usually or is influenced by something which is totally wrong. Either um, they fall for huge marketing schemes from, I guess, certain ECU brands or they just fall for whatever it is their friend asks or suggests that they use. So here's what I think um, you need to know before you can make an informed decision on what ECU or engine management system is right for you. Number one, what I recommend is you write down a list, an itemized list of what exactly it is you want and what exactly you need from your engine management system. So what I mean by that is, okay, is it a four cylinder? Um, you need it to be able to run a boosted car, um, maybe you need it to do boost by gear, and all of the list of features you would need from your ECU. You write that down, and then I guess you narrow it down to a couple issues, whatever, don't limit yourself at that point. Maybe pick five of them, and then you compare it with the spec sheets that these issues can do. Again, um, not everything is the same. Just because an issue says it can do something, doesn't mean it does it well. For instance, an EC will tell you that they may be able to do closed loop fuel correction. Some of them do it very horribly. So number one, that's what I would do. Get the list down and get that down to what exactly cross reference, what exactly you think you need with what the issue is saying that they can do. Number two, um, hit the forums, hit the websites, hit the Facebook pages and check out the support for that issue. Um, you need to know what everyone else is saying about that issue. Again, marketing schemes or whatever might say that the issue can do X, Y, and Z. And in the real world, they usually can or cannot do it as they say they can. So hit up the Facebook group. For instance, if you're considering a Holly EFI or a Haltech, um, hit up the Haltech groups and see what the majority of folks are saying about that. Number three, um, speak with your tuner. It makes absolutely no sense that you narrow down your issue. You say you want X, Y feature from it, and then you all set, you pay with your credit card, and you get the issue, and no one around you can tune. Now, obviously, in modern times, like now, um, persons like myself offer remote tuning for various issue platforms. However, it's always wise to speak with whoever it is you have in mind to tune your car and look for what is most widely supported or easily supported. Um, in case you have question, um, questions about your issue, you need someone who is sort of familiar. Although the helplines and whatnot do work, but it helps to have your tuner um, have some input on that because ultimately he or she will be the one tuning the car. And I think one of the most important ones is after you've done all of these, um, you need to have a budget in mind. Uh, now the budget can be good or bad, it can go both ways. Here's what I have to say about the budget. Uh, so say you now read down and then you say you want feature X, Y, and Z from your ECU and your tuner supports it, um, then it comes down to the budget. Um, obviously, good ECUs cost money. Um, you can get into that at a later date as to whether a cheap ECU can do X and Y feature. There are pros and cons about both. Um, but ultimately, uh, make an informed decision and choose the right one for you. Don't let your budget limit you. The reason I say that is that don't be, don't go into it with um, tunnel vision that, okay, I'm looking for a $500 ECU and no matter what I'm beginning or I'm willing to compromise, just because I want a $500 ECU. Uh, sometimes it's worth, it's worth it, saving a couple extra dollars, say whatever you want costs $800 instead of $500. Sometimes it, it's better saving up for an extra week, an extra month, two months, whatever long it takes you to save up for that. And make 
the better choice because whatever issue you buy you're gonna have to live with it obviously you can sell it down the road but um you'll be losing money on that most times so it's not even worth the headache so save up and let your budget be your guide uh generally friends can give you a hint or two as to what to buy but i have learned that friends are usually most friends or well, my friends anyways most of my friends uh are not knowledgeable enough to actually be able to tell me that okay a hal tech is better than a link or whatever unless they're in the industry as well so they usually just buy into the whole marketing of the big issue brands and oftentimes they see x racer using whatever issue and he's running whatever maybe eight seconds nine seconds in the quarter mile or he's setting whatever lap time they automatically assume that the issue is responsible for that and most times it's a total package not just the the issue so again take everything your friends say for grain of salt but just a few steps i thought that i should mention as to what exactly you need to do to get to making an informed decision but uh, again but the number one is speak with your team it makes no sense buying an issue after you run through all of your spec sheets and whatnot and you can't get anybody to tune it that's the most frustrating part again thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you guys on the next one till then stay safe